All right, a couple housekeeping items before we move into roll call. Uh, Ron is with us on the phone tonight, and Teresa is gone. Brian will be filling in not only as interim city manager, but also city clerk tonight. So with that, we will have roll call. Nelson. Here. Orison. Here. Larson. Here. Winchell. No, I'm here. Larson isn't. Tracy's gone. You're right. Hanson. Yeah. Reed. Here. Moriarty. Here. All right. Item three is the consent agenda. 3A is a motion to approve city council minutes of June 21st, 2021. B, licenses, renewal of class E liquor, class B wine, class C beer, and Sunday sales for Walmart, subject to final approval by the Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division. C is a motion to approve subcontractors for the 2021 Fourth Street resurfacing project. It's an IDOT project. All States Pavement Recycling of Rogers, Minnesota, K&W Electric Incorporated of Cedar Falls, Iowa, MLS Landscape and Design of Granville, Iowa, and Service Signing LC, I assume that's supposed to be maybe LLC, of uh, Cedar Falls, Iowa, and Pillar, Inc. of Huxley, Iowa. D is a motion to approve additional subcontractor for the wastewater treatment plant, Phase 2 project, Alton Well of Orange City, Iowa. E is a motion to award proposal from Pixler Electric for $3,934 for electrical work for the new restroom at the Regional Collection Center. F is a resolution adopting final assessment schedule for nuisance abatement and confirming and levying the assessments. G is a resolution to fix a date for a public hearing on proposal to enter into a sewer revenue loan and distribution agreement and to borrow money thereunder in a principal amount not to exceed $3 million. This was recommended and discussed at the Public Works Committee. H is a motion to approve quote from Dactronics out of Brookings, South Dakota for $13,806 for the purchase of three scoreboards for Pedersen Park Complex. This is a CIP item. I is a resolution authorizing permanent transfer of funds of budgeted transfers for the month ending June 30, 2021. And J is a, a motion to approve renewal of technology services agreement with solutions for the city of Spencer and the Spencer Police Department. I'll move on that down. First by Lauren. Second. Second by Bill. Any discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. And uh, let's Dye see. And I. Ron's and I. Nelson, I. Orson, I. Winchell, I. Reed, I. Moriarty, I. Hansen, I. Thank you. Item four is a public hearing. 4A, public hearing on the proposed transfer of a triangular tract of land in the southeast quarter of Section 24, Township 96 North, Range 37 West of the 5th Principal Meridian, Clay County, Iowa, to Eckhart Land uh, Company, Incorporated. I declare the public hearing open. <clears throat> have we received any written comments against? We have none. Do we have any oral comments against? Do we have any written comments in favor of? Uh, we have none. Do we have any oral comments in favor of? I declare the public hearing closed. 4A1 is a resolution approving the transfer of city real property, triangular tract of land in the southeast quarter of Section 24, Township 96 North, Range 37 West, of the 5th Principal Meridian, Clay County, Iowa, to Eckhart Land. I move the resolution and I'd like to Comments on it from Orange and Okay, first by George, second by Tom. We have a uh, request for comments, Jim. Good evening. Yeah, this is part of, you know, Mike Eckhart and Eckhart Land came in to, to plat five lots along 25th Street Southwest, and the city owns a triangle in that corner at the intersection of 4th Avenue Southwest and 25th Street at the end of that drainage ditch. And that triangular track was acquired in uh, 1990 um, so that that storm sewer could run diagonally through there. And not until they got a design, they got a larger track than they needed. And now, because the city doesn't use that, it makes sense to transfer that to Eckhart so they can square up that lot. Otherwise, that corner lot would have had a big triangle cut out of the corner. So it squares that up. 
and then it's going to be platted. And I think this transfer probably, you're approving the transfer, but won't actually transfer it until the plat goes through, is my understanding. So it's mainly getting permission to do it. Thank you, Jim. Any other comments or discussion, questions on this? Nope. Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Ron? Aye. Nelson, aye. Orson, aye. Winchell, aye. Reed, aye. Moriarty, aye. Hansen, aye. Thank you. Item five, new business. 5A is a motion to approve allocation of $25,000 for the sidewalk grant program from the sidewalk reserve. I'll make a motion on that, Mayor. First by Ron. Second. Second by Donovan. Discussion or questions on this? It's good to see the program continue. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All, those, aye. all those opposed? Motion carries. 5B is a resolution authorizing permanent transfer of funds at fiscal year 2020-2021, year end. Um, this is a recommendation by the Finance Committee who met last week. I'll introduce our resolution. First by Bill. Second. Second by Lauren. Discussion, questions on this? I do have one addition. We discussed it at the Finance Committee, but um, it didn't get added to your list, and that would be um, Main Street's repayment of the downtown lighting loan of 15000 from the SMID dollars back to the city because as we did, the council remembers when we approved that, um, we allowed Main Street to borrow from us as they went through the project and then repay us back. So that is included on the final list but was updated after the packet went out. Thank you, Brian. Any other questions or discussion? Vote by machine, please. Ron? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Nelson, aye. Orison, aye. Wunchell, aye. Reed, aye. Moriarty, aye. Hansen, aye. Thank you. 5C is a resolution to provide for a notice of hearing on proposed plans and specifications, <coughs> form of contract, and estimate cost for the 2021 7th Avenue Southwest Sewer Extension Project and for the taking of bids thereof, with a hearing date of 8 2 2021 at 6 30 p.m. and a letting date of 7 22 3 o'clock p.m. Should that be August? Are those dates correct? Okay. Recommended by the Public Works Committee. So moved. First by George, second by Tom. Discussion or questions <coughs> on this? <coughs> Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Ron? Aye, Mayor. Oops. Thank you. Nelson, I. Orson, I. Winchell, I. Reed, I. Moriarty, I. Um, Hanson, I. Thank you. Item six, department head reports. We'll start with the planning department. Alec. Good evening, everyone. Um, for the month of June, we issued a total of 35 building permits, uh, two of which were plumbing permits, eight electric permits, and uh, the rest were just miscellaneous uh, building permits. Um, for a total of 222,534 uh, is the estimated total project value that was put into the city for all these permits. Um, nuisances, we had a total of 32 complaints that we responded to over the course of June, uh, we posted 72 grasses for to be mowed, only mowed about 12 of them after those seven days. Um, other updates, uh, Adam Severson has started as the building services official on June 21st. Uh, he's been doing a great job in his new role. He's definitely hit the ground running. Um, just a friendly reminder, uh, front yard parking, no parking on the grass, um, especially in the in the right of way. Um, not only does it sometimes block sidewalks if that's that road has a sidewalk, um, it makes it hard for any other folks on that same block to back out of their driveway, making it dangerous to come out into the street. 
Um, so we want to avoid that if at all possible. Um, on the floodplain management side, we have received the final maps for the new floodplain that will go into effect November 5th. We're working on getting um, the language in our ordinance uh, ready to be adopted um, to make sure Spencer has all the required language and the city code stays in compliance. Other than that, uh, if we have any questions in regards to the planning department, I'm open. Did the uh, green industrial area all fall within the floodplain? So the study that the city was having done on that, we haven't received the final um, notification on how that's all going to play out. We have received preliminary work on it, um, showing that the, blood, the preliminary work that was done is going to show most of it in the new floodplain. Can you walk through, because we're on TV, the citizens that are possibly could have a change because either they were in a floodplain and now they're not, and vice versa. They weren't, and now they are. Yes. And how long do they have to comply? Um, so come November 5th, the new floodplain is set to be come into effect. Um, those properties that were, no long, were, were not in the floodplain but now are going into the floodplain, um, if you can show that your elevation is above that, we'll be able to take you out. Um, but you will have to go through a process, which they may have already done, because there were a few properties that were taken out of the floodplain previously, but now due to new data, um, they're going back into it. A large majority of the properties that had done that were taken out of the previous floodplain, were able to remain out of the floodplain with, their, with the new one coming into play, um, but some were not. And uh, we're working on getting that process. We have a large, we have a list of all of those, and we have um, notification to be sent out of how they can go about um, pursuing different options. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Alec. Cool. Thanks. <coughs> Library, Mandy. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, one of the things we'd like to do uh, this month is collect some tales from the pandemic. So we've missed everybody for the past year and a half, and we want to know about you, what new skills or hobbies that you picked up, um, what books you read, the recipes you tried, your new favorite movies, the TV shows you binged, art or writing that you made. Um, you can send us your stories on uh, at our e email library info at spencerioacity.com. Drop them off at the front desk or even snail mail them to us. Um, you can remain anonymous or put your name on it. Uh, we'd like to share some of those in our Facebook and our newsletter. Um, so I know a lot of people picked up some new skills during the past year and a half. Um, we have a book giveaway day for the kids and the teens on July 14th. That'll be outside from 12 to 6, uh, inside if it's too hot. On Thursday, July 29th from 2 to 4 in East Leach Park, we're having the Big Bang Bubble Stations. Um, so there'll be all kinds of different ways to make bubbles. Um, and the Spencer Fire Department will be joining us at 3 to hose those bubbles off. So uh, get in on the fun with that. Our activity kits are, right now we have candy sushi for the teens and the kids. Um, July 12th, it's color changing slime for the teens and kids. July 19th for the kids, it's bubbles and paint by number for the teens. And then July 26th, we'll have for the teens break-in bags. So you've heard of escape rooms. This is, you have to break into the bags. So you have to solve the puzzles in order to get the treats that are in the bags. Um, and then on August 6th for the teens, uh, Bree from Clay County Conservation is going to take them canoeing. So um, call us to sign up. We wanted to thank the summer reading sponsors, um, the Friends of the Public Library, Spencer Public Library, the JCs, Denison Drywall, SMU, Dermis, and the Clay County Conservation Board. We had a lot of fun with the mud puppies. Um, we had about uh, 60 kids there, and we had 90 kids at the Treasure Village um, event at the uh, Banshell at the park. Um, we also have added the um, Historic Preservation Lecture City Series. We have those on video 
to available for checkout at the library or they're also on our website in the summer reading tab if you if for adults if you watch one of those um, you can get a free entry in our draw in our uh, prize drawings for summer reading um, and for the adult kits we have coffee tea and coloring um, and paint by numbers floral kits and then there's a zoom book discussion on July 26th at 6:30 for Miriam Toe's book, Women Talking, which is our all Iowa reads book this summer. Any questions? We have a lot going on. Sorry, that was long. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mindy. Fire Department, Chief Kanyan. I know, right? <laughs> it's going to be all right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council, and citizens, and Spencer. <clears throat> Over the past month, we, your fire department ran 62 calls, 20 of which were fire calls, including a uh, strong house fire, along with a few gas leaks, as well as some motor calls, a few false alarms, and unfortunately, we did have a couple of traffic accidents along the way. Uh, from an EMS side of the house, we ran 28 calls with uh, dealing with uh, chest pains, shortness of breath, especially with our seniors in this hot weather it really exacerbates them and it makes it a lot harder. Uh, some seizure activity and a few uh, broken bones along the way. Uh, your in-house ambulance, Ambulance 104, we went ahead and took a couple people to a detox center. For our training this month, we, were, we exercised uh, the EMS side of the house with a scope of practice. What's new with the state licensures? What are the advancements? that your EMS and your EMTs can do from the fire department, as well as we had a drill of cardiac management. What would we do for uh, full-blown codes? From the fire side, we did some building pre-planning. We had the opportunity to take a serious tour of what can be uh, effective for us as far as the firefighters uh, with the hospital, as well as Isanova welcomed us into their campus, as well as Pivot Point so far. Uh, lastly, our trainings revolved around rope systems, uh, learning how to create a hauling system as well as lowering system, as well as Stokes basket operations, and this will prove to be effective for a few of the plants that are going into shutdown mode. So we paralleled with them. From a special service standpoint, we went ahead and we, it was an honor to uh, be with the Clay County races over the last couple of weeks, as well as have the opportunity to train some librarians in uh, fire extinguisher training. Uh, we also did a flag fest fireworks standby, and uh, we had the opportunity to escort the girls' high school soccer team out of town. And those are just a couple of the events that your uh, fire department is doing. And remember, check your fire de your smoke detectors anytime. We appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. I want to thank you for the displaying the flag. Oh, uh, what an great. honor! That was great. It's this whole city is great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Police Department, Chief Warburton. Good evening. The Spencer Police Department for the month of June responded to 983 calls for service, and we performed 46 arrests. Uh, this last month, um, the lieutenants and I uh, attended the Iowa Acts of Interest uh, for law enforcement. Uh, put on by the prosecuting attorneys training council down in Des Moines. This was a law update class uh, that was on June 24th. Um, back on June 13th, this police department assisted uh, the local Special Olympics here in town, being that their participants could not go down go down to Des Moines uh, because of COVID restrictions. Uh, we were able to assist them at the track meet and and pass out some medals. So that was a good time uh, for everybody here at the PD. Um, since it's uh, the weekend after the or week after the 4th of July, I feel it appropriate to talk about fireworks for a minute. Uh, over the 3rd and 4th, uh, the police department responded to 16 uh, complaints of fireworks here locally, which compared to last year, we had 38 complaints. So this was a 58% uh, decrease in the number of complaints. However, I don't believe there was a 58% decrease in the number of fireworks going off. <laughs> So um, we're just becoming more tolerant. So um, future happenings here, July 11th through the 13th, um, the Iowa Dare Association uh, conference is being held here. We are sponsoring that event out at the event center. 
Uh, Lieutenant Van Arlu has put a lot of work in um, as the president of the Iowa Dare Association Board uh, to put on this conference here locally. Uh, officers, Dare officers throughout the state will uh, be present at this training. Um, unfortunately, um, after this event, Lieutenant Van Arlu will be stepping down as the Dare officer here in Spencer. He's put in 13 years um, as the Dare instructor. Um, and we'd just like to congratulate him for his uh, years of service and um, the connections and commitment he's made to the students here in Spencer. It's, it's commendable. Uh, lastly, um, I don't know if you guys have seen our social media posts, but our school resource officer uh, got a, um, a, a little makeover. We were able to stripe our car in purple and gold, and uh, which put the uh, Spencer Tigers emblem uh, tiger on the hood of the car as well as some other um, uh, paw prints and stuff like that over the top of the car which kind of uh, reaffirms our commitment to the Spencer school system um, and our students here uh, I believe it'll help our uh, SRO relate better with the students and um, I think it's a I think it's a good deal so um, have any questions for me That's all that's great. thank you thank you Will our dare officer still be on the Spencer Police Force? Then? Yes, yes, yes. He's still going to be there. Uh, officer Kearney is uh, taking over for him. He's already been sent down to the school and been trained. So, uh, Officer uh, Kearney and Officer Hanson will continue to be our our dare instructors. So that program is not going anywhere. It's here. It's here to stay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chief Public Works, Mark. Good evening. For the month of uh, June, I'd say the biggest event we had in the Public Works Department was the retirement of Craig Polson. Uh, we'd like to thank him for his years of, uh, of dedication to the position and high quality. It, uh, he certainly leaves a gap in our office that uh, will, will be missed. Mark Craig has been promoted from the street division to take that position. Uh, he's now working full time. He was able to shadow Craig for a while, which is helpful for our division. Uh, Flag Fest uh, was probably one of the things in the month of June for the street division, the prep and tear down. Um, it goes pretty well because they've done it so many times and uh, it's a pretty, pretty well run operation, pretty smooth. They've been also working on sidewalk ramps and street patching, mowing, equipment repairs. Uh, we are currently interviewing for open positions at the uh, street division. So uh, that is in process. A reminder about the solid waste division when you have a, uh, when we have, are fortunate enough to have a, a holiday in, in, in our great country, then when it's on Monday, everything is moved back one day for your pickup. So if you get picked up on Tuesday, you get picked up on Wednesday and so forth, so forth through the week. So just a reminder, there's usually a few cans hanging out there on Monday morning. Um, also at the landfill, we talked a little bit about it at the uh, committee meeting on leachate, but we did haul 194,707 gallons of leachate back to the wastewater treatment plant, uh, even during a, uh, a drought. We took in 6,932 tons of solid waste at the landfill, and that equates to 637 truckloads that came through the gate. So, busy place. Uh, is there any questions that I may help with? Is there any? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Park and Rec, Jared. Good evening. Um, we're doing uh, quite a few maintenance projects um, in the Parks Department. Um, met with J.R. Schumacher today. He's going to start doing some trail repairs out at Stolly's. Um, I think he's tearing out uh, several panels today, some of the worst ones um, that are creating some trip hazards, safety hazards, bike tires, uh, stuff like that. Um, we're going to be uh, installing um, some trail markers here in the coming weeks. Um, we'll be putting posts alongside the trail to give emergency locations, um, speed limit signs, directional signs, uh, that sort of stuff here in the next uh, few weeks. Um, currently, we're working on playground repairs um, at Sunset and Waterway Park. Um, so we do have some of those areas um, taped off or uh, fenced off. So please use caution at, at those two areas as we repair um, some playground equipment. Um, next week with the park board and the Parks, Rec, and Culture Committee, we'll be meeting at the Aquatic Center doing a, a tour of the Aquatic Center in Riverview Park, um, walking through that facility, um, seeing some maintenance items and, and other things that, that are there. 
Um, working with Ross from KCN on uh, boat ramp uh, down in West Leach Park, um, getting those permits and stuff submitted to the DNR and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, and then he'll be working on uh, some of the design work for that. And then uh, finally, we have um, done some temporary pickleball courts that are taped on the two um, east courts down at Riverview Park. And they are installed and, and ready for use. So. Questions? Jared, on the uh, trail system up there where it crosses Highway 18 up north mm -hmm. of the city, is there a speed limit coming into that now? Have they lowered the speed down on 18? That I don't know. Um, so ours, uh, the speed limit on the trail, or are you talking speed I'm limit on the road? I'm talking about on the highway. Would they you know, put it down to like 45 or something? That I'm not, I'm not sure of. Where, where at, George? Up on Highway 18. Up by the, where it crosses by the State the, Patrol the, Office. The Patrol Office. I mean, right before right the stop sign? Right across the Patrol Office. Yeah, no, there's been no change to the speed limits there. I would think they should slow them down there before they get up to that intersection. I, th I believe, uh, maybe Jim or Mark, correct me, or Jared, I think the DOT, that plan went through the DOT, right? And they did all the specs and, you know, all that stuff, so we'd have a similar similar situation as the, our other two intersections dealing with the state of Iowa on that. So it's a good good concern to have. Alright, thanks. What Thank I'm you. concerned about is if there's three or four bicycles all at the same time up there that need to cross, it might take longer to cross. Somebody might come quite a distance on that highway before they get across. Mm -hmm. and I think a slower speed limit would help. All parties crossing certainly need to be aware of, you know, all their surroundings. Golf course, Brian Moore is currently out spraying for grubs. So the course is uh, still open, even though it's a little dry. So I would encourage everyone to get out there and get a round or two of golf in. Don, city attorney report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. It was uh, a somewhat lighter month uh, for the month of June than normal. And uh, nothing unusual or concerning to report to you. So I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes uh, uh, to remind everyone that many uh, items of legislation that were adopted by the Iowa legislature became effective July 1. Uh, they adopted, and the governor signed, slightly over 200 measures. Uh, I'm not going to summarize all of them, but a few I noted. Uh, they've got a, a new legislation defining low-speed electric bikes and, and regulating those. Um, I don't think they'll be inconsistent with what we've done at our park system, but we'll have to review that. Um, but essentially, it seems that low-speed bikes, those that don't exceed 20 miles an hour, are basically permitted wherever non-electric bikes are permitted. Um, you've probably heard about the uh, permitless uh, carry. Uh, if you don't, there are a number of exceptions uh, based on past conduct or criminal charges or some other things, but if if you don't hit one of those exceptions, you're you're free to carry a, a pistol um, without a permit, without telling anybody. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, those in control of public buildings like this one still have the authority to prohibit carry within the building. Um, there were some voting changes that reduced uh, uh, absentee ballot voting. I don't think they're extreme, but there's some minor changes. Um, there was important legislation supporting Iowa police officers, uh, providing and even expanding uh, their protections and, and providing some other benefits. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive legislation, but generally positive for our police department. Um, you can now get alcohol delivered to your door. You probably learned about that, so <laughs> that's it. Um, a side benefit, I guess, of COVID. Alcohol now travels. Um, I'll have more information, and uh, the league will uh, publish and will provide a directory of those pieces of legislation that are particularly important to cities. Any questions? Thank you, Don. Item 7, engineer's report. Jim? <clears throat> Good evening. Just 
update on projects. We actually today have no projects under construction right now, uh, but we do have some going to start. Um, I think the sewer rehab guys are coming back to uh, finish up that project, but that's a pretty low impact project. There's maintenance on some of the manholes around town. Uh, the PD parking lot, uh, that bid letting was set for July 15th. Um, so that's the next thing to come up. Uh, the big project would be the 4th Street overlay. The late start date, that's how those DOT contracts work. The completion date, they give you so many days, so they figure the last day you can start and use up all your days is August 30th, 35 days to complete that work. I think they're going to come in and do some patching earlier in August, so uh, you won't see anything going on there until August. Um, the uh, next meeting, I'll probably come in uh, and set a letting date for the uh, storm sewer that runs from the river along uh, West 4th Street to 32nd Avenue West to the, to the Westfield project. Um, I think it's probably time to cut that one loose, put it on the street. The water table, I don't think it'll ever go any lower than it is right now. So I uh, want to get that one out for bids, and, um, and that's basically all we have. They, they were patching, doing street patches last week, but they've got all those done, so that work's done too. So that's all I have unless there's questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. City Manager's Report, Brian. <clears throat> yeah, um, <clears throat> just want to remind, I may have said it's last time, but our new recreational portal is active and available off of our link, or off of a link off of our website. It's on the main page, so you can sign up for yoga classes or campground spots, shelter reservations, all of that through that portal that's now active. Memberships to the pool or golf course as well. Um, also right now, um, the police... The police drug awareness fund run is um, scheduled to take place on July 31st. Um, that registration you can do online through the recreation portal. Um, early registration is due the 16th. That guarantees your T-shirt here on the event of the or date of the event, but you can register up till the past that. It's just um, your T-shirt may be delayed, I believe, if that happens. Um, stuff so. If you have questions on using the portal or whatever, always give us a call at City Hall. Amanda and Mary Beth at the front desk are becoming familiar with answering those questions and stuff. Um, over the next week or so, I'll be getting in touch with each of you as chair of your respective committee and discuss some um, items in, for each committee to discuss in this interim just to keep some continuity between um, Amanda leaving and the new manager starting so we kind of keep some things on track so I've spoken with a couple of you so far um, the rest um, in the next week week and a half I'll get in touch with you to kind of go over some items etc um, the last thing is we've had a couple calls but the recycling schedule is on our website um, if you're needing to find it when you go to spenceriowacity.com it's under residents and then garbage and recycling, and then the new 2020, 21-22 um, schedule is available there. Um, so I know we've had a couple of people have some issues finding it. I think they're looking under the government tab, which has the old one. Um, Vanessa, our new education coordinator, is working on getting the information up and getting those sites together. So, But it is out there on the under the residence tab. Um, otherwise... From the finance side, we're busy with year-end closeout. Um, our audit, we verified today, will be the week of, the last week of August, whatever that is. Um, they'll be on site, I think, the 30th or something. They'll be on here to do the um, on-site work for that. So um, I think that's it. If there's any questions. Any questions for Brian? Just one comment to Brian. I don't, today's... Uh, Invoice I got from SMU. They did have their new recycle schedule on there. Oh, they did yeah, too. Really nice pamphlet. So, to what you were addressing. Okay, so it, I did see it was going to come out with SMU. I just yep. haven't seen the bills come out. So it's nice. <laughs> yeah, the one that's online. I, Vanessa did a very good job. At, it's brightly colored and stuff, so it does look nice. So good to hear it's in those bills. Good. Thank you, Brian. Item nine, mayor's report. Just a few items. Uh, 
A motion to approve the appointment of Jerry Bond to the Electrical Board with a term expiring of June 30, 2025. First by Bill. Second. Second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. I'd like to thank Jerry for his continued service to the citizens of Spencer. I've been spending some time Friday, had the uh, opportunity to attend two all-staff meetings just for the opening to give some comments to the staff. It was good to see everyone and just uh, went over the process of where we're at in our city manager search and uh, what we're looking for um, in the next city manager. Been spending time with Brian, as he commented, working on the committee structure with the goal being when the new city manager um, starts, they don't start from zero you know we have projects in the works and you know workflow is happening in the committees and so it'll give them the opportunity to not only bring their own skill set to the table but integrate into the current workflow as well uh, later this month i have the opportunity to welcome it's a statewide dare conference correct chief uh, do you know about how many people will be here 50 so we'll have 50 dare officers from all around the state of iowa in our community, um, anybody is welcome to go with me if you would like. Um, I can get you details to welcome them and say a few words. I uh, had the opportunity as well last week to attend a uh, life-saving award presentation. Um, the Red Cross, a uh, couple team members of the city um, deployed some resources to save a life in the last year and were nominated by a coworker. And so uh, it was a closed um, ceremony by the Red Cross. And so I just want to thank uh, number one all of the people who are prepared in our community to save a life and sometimes uh, we have to do that and so um, it was a humbling uh, ceremony to attend fireworks confusion over the fourth of july uh, i want the community to know that i called a meeting between uh, the chamber director and the fireworks committee which is basically jeremy parsons and bob rose that are left and then brian weave and Teresa reardon the city clerk as well so we just had a discussion about, I think that's everybody that was there, right, Brian? So we just had a general discussion about um, how we have fireworks in the community, what the roles of everyone are. Um, they occur at the fairgrounds, but the fairgrounds, the, the fair is not, you know, a sponsor of the fireworks and really is just a host from a, a physical location standpoint as well as a fireworks vendor standpoint. And so the money, there's questions about that. It costs around $8,000 for the fireworks display that we typically have. Uh, it's funded through community partnerships. Uh, the history is a long history. I would say at least trackable back for 30, 30 or 35 years, the people that were around the table longer than that, Bill says. So uh, the discussion was uh, how do we move forward and do we need and want fireworks? And so the to-dos coming out of that meeting uh, were that J&M is the fireworks company that puts on the display. And what is critical in a display like that is the fallout area of the fireworks based on the size of the fireworks that are being launched. And so Jeremy is at the fair is certainly open to we can launch fireworks as a community there. Uh, but also we really haven't researched other areas that would be potential spots to launch fireworks if we want. And so there'll be a recommendation that comes back uh, to uh, the group of people who met as to how to present more information back into the community and then make a decision i think collectively about when the community and what the community's expectations are related to fireworks so there's a lot of towns that have fireworks in the fourth of july spectrum uh, we have fireworks in spencer at the fair and so just a holistic discussion about fireworks in the future i just want the community to know that um, the topic isn't um, done we uh, are will actively engage more people in the future but those discussions are going on had the opportunity to be interviewed by rebecca basu who if you don't know she's a uh, edit not an editorial she's an opinion writer for the des moines register she has a long storied career of covering political and uh, uh, cultural articles mainly is the beat that she covers and so the interest in our community in the last month or so related to freedom of speech and what we've discussed in committee as well as uh, my mayor's report and my discussions with Calvin and community discussions with Calvin. And so that was published Sunday in the Des Moines Register. Um, if you have not read that, I would encourage you to read that. I think she did a good job covering all different angles um, of the 
impact of the freedom of speech as well as the legality of it, uh, as well as just the general takeaways, um, how it's impacted uh, different people in different ways. And so that occurred last week. We have elections in this community every two years. This is an election year, and I met with Teresa just to get everything prepared. So if anyone's interested in running for office, the dates that you need to be concerned with, you can take papers out now, either at the city clerk's office or the Clay County Auditor's office. The papers are due back to either the clerk, uh, actually to the clerk. So no matter if you take them out at the courthouse or at city hall, they're due back to the clerk here. Uh, between August 23rd is the first day that you can turn them in and five o'clock p.m. September 16th is the deadline to turn your papers in. Uh, then Teresa will take them over to the courthouse on September 17th by noon and then the auditor will certify all the signatures. You need a minimum of 25 signatures on your papers to be eligible to run for office. And with that I would just give some reflection on 1776, the year this country, uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed. Um, I'd like to thank all of those who fight for freedom. I think when we talk about that a lot of times, uh, the military is where a lot of attention is paid, and certainly the military fights for freedom around the globe on a day-in, day-out basis. Uh, but the reality is uh, a lot of people at a lot of different levels fight for freedom. and. Um, Everyone, I think, takes them seriously. Not everybody's views and opinions are the same, but whether it's around your family kitchen table uh, at night, whether it's in your peer group or your neighborhood or on your job or as an elected official, um, there's lots of different ways to enjoy freedom and there's lots of different ways to stand up and advocate for freedom. And so uh, I took some time this weekend and I would encourage everyone to take some time and just reflect on uh, freedom and what it means and uh, what is your contribution um, as a citizen of the United States for freedom and moving forward in that type of light. So with that, I would entertain any questions. All right. Item 10, Council Committee Reports. So far, um, <clears throat> we'll have the regular City Council meeting on Monday. July 19th and then as Jared alluded to um, we'll have a joint park board along with the rec and culture and committee on our park rec and culture committee on next Tuesday the 13th um, and just meet at the aquatic center and that starts at 5 I don't know if we set a time but um, just meet there and we'll um, have the meeting starting at the aquatic center that's all I have that's all we have scheduled right now Grilling hot dogs, Jared. Yeah, you're, you're bringing them, right? I'll bring them. <laughs> I'll roll in. We'll cook some dogs. Any comments on the committees? No. Nope. Item 11, I would entertain a motion to approve the bills and claims. Hello. First by Bill. Second. Second by Donovan. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those, aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item 12, other opportunity to address the council. Would anyone like the mic? Mr. Mayor. Yes, George. I would like to give accolades to Councilman Donovan and also Mr. Mayor Robinson. I think you two did an outstanding job on what could have been a very explosive issue in our community on free speech. And the fact there wasn't a free speech issue, but you covered it all very well. And I, I think it, um, you, you did the community proud. And I, I know the fat lady hasn't sung yet. We're not sure everything's over with, but hopefully it, it's near it. But so far, I think, so far, so good. And thank you. Thank you, George. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, very seldom do I agree with the uh, journalist in the Des Moines <laughs> Register, um, but um, I thought uh, she did a, a, a very good job and a fair job, and I believe that the city um, uh, came out of that uh, on a very positive note. Very good. Anyone else? Nobody? All right. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. First, <laughs> lightly by Tom. I didn't want to step on Bob.
<laughs> that is that is absolutely the most quiet first <laughs> ever in my day. Well done. Well done. So, <laughs> topped by Donovan. Wow. Okay. It's a, it's a Tuesday, Friday, Monday, I guess. So we have first by Tom, second by Donovan. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Meeting adjourned.